Second Chronicles 36. You must be reminded when you're reading Second Chronicles 36, you're also reading more detail in the book of Jeremiah. And then Second Kings. Chronicles is just a light touch of the kings of Judah. So when we read 36, we're also read, we'll also read about Jeremiah. Then the people of the land took Jehoaz, the son of Josiah. Josiah was a good king, died stupidly. He disobeyed the word of God and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. One king so far. Jehoaz was 20 and three years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months and long reign in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt put him down in Jerusalem and condemned, that's the first time that word shows up, the land to a hundred talents of silver and a town of gold, a, a tariff, a tax. Egypt comes and you owe us money. You know, America, we owe other nations money. England owes other nations money. And the king of Egypt made Elkanah his brother king over Judah. So this first king we're reading about here, Jehoaz, he's gone. He's been replaced. Egypt's come in and sent Jehoiakim. And Nico, that's the king from chapter 35, took Jehoaz his brother and carried to Egypt. Beginning of captivities for Judah. And Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, king number two. And he did that what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. They're not going to get better. Against him came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters, chains, handcuffs, feet cuffs, to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in the temple of Babylon. This is the first time you need to write a note. There's going to be three times Nebuchadnezzar is going to come to Jerusalem and sack it. And you'll find this in Jeremiah spoken about in Daniel. This is number one of three times. This is where Daniel heads off into Babylon. In this captivity here, the first time would be Daniel. With some of the vessels of the house of the Lord... And he puts them in the uh, the temple at Babylon. They are preserved there. And the only time they're taken out is when Belshazzar wants to have that party and feast. The next time they're taken out of that is when Cyrus says, go back. So God sends his stuff where it's going to be protected. Quite interesting. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations, plural, which he did, and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the books of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his stead. Third king. Jehoiakim was eight years old when he was, began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days. Who be? In Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the year expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon and the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. This is the second time uh, Nebuchadnezzar has come and he's taken more precious stuff out of the temple. And he's taken the king too. And he sets up Zedekiah to be king. Egypt's come in, Nikos took this king out, brought him to Egypt, set up another man. Another man comes in, Babylon comes and takes him and sets up another king. Now here's, here's another king, set up Zedekiah. This is the last king. There will be no king after Zedekiah until Jesus Christ sits on the throne of David. This is it. From King Saul to Zedekiah. This is it. Zedekiah was 1 and 20 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. 
his God and humbled not himself, he stood pride before Jeremiah, there he is, the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. So when you read Jeremiah, he's speaking to Zedekiah, he's speaking to the priest, I mean, to the, to the kings that we're reading right now. And the Bible says he spoke to those kings and he told them exactly what the word is. Jeremiah was faithful to the word of God, to the prophecy. Now, let me ask you a question. At this time of Zedekiah, when Babylon's taken, this will be the third time coming up, but that's it. The city is destroyed. How many converts did Jeremiah get? Maybe Baruch and maybe that, that, that unit. If we give him those benefits of the doubt, two people. If we go into the days of Noah, eight people. If we go into the days of Lot, well, four went out and three were saved. And that's not church age doctrine, but there is going to be a very fine little remnant of the Jewish people when Jesus comes. Because watch here now. It's only going to get worse. At Jeremiah. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. That's not good. Because God has set up Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. Who had made him swear by God. Oh, made an oath. Made a covenant. And God says in the law, you're gonna, if you're going to swear by me, you better fulfill it. Solomon speaks, hey, anybody makes an oath, you, you better not make an oath. But he stiffed his neck. That's the only time you ever see stiff, right there. Stiffen. Stiffened. That means he just hardened his neck. He didn't get right. And the axe is going to fall. And hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. He's not going to repent. He's not going to get right. And God sent him Jeremiah. And if the preaching of Jeremiah didn't get him right. Now here we go. Moreover, all the chief of the priests. There's the high priest. Not only the king, but now the priest. There are three offices of the children of Israel. There's the king, the priest, and the people. The king is bad, and now the priest, the high priest is bad. And the people transgress very much after all the abomination, plural, of the heathen. You guys are no worse than the heathen. Jonah would not want to hear that. Peter would not want to hear that. Don't you call my people the worst. Peter says, as far as those people, they're unclean, Lord. God says, don't, don't, don't call that which, which I made clean, unclean. Jonah says, I'm going the other way. That's an insult God is saying to the to his Jewish people. You know when Jesus said, I have found no greater faith, no, not in Israel. You realize he said that about a Gentile? That aggravated him. And when Jesus gave the lesson in his hometown, he says, Naaman the Syrian, he says, the widow woman of Elijah, which were, which were both Gentiles. You know, they, were, they took him and they were going to throw him over the hill and kill him. I don't understand what that hill of the brow is, but whatever that is, they were going to take him for the purpose of killing him. And that is the testimony of God to his people, which he will never downcast and never forget and remember his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, you know what God has the nerve to say about the church age today? You make me sick and I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You're naked, wretched, poor, and miserable. You're totally opposite what I, what you think you are. That's God speaking. That's not Jeremiah. That's the Holy Spirit recording. Whoever wrote this, Holy Spirit says, I got something else for you to write. I dealt with a man, you know, the Bible's a lie. That's not a lie. That's the Holy Spirit. I can imagine the person that wrote that and looking back and reading that like, whoa. Shaking the pen like this. Where did that come from? It came from the Holy Spirit. And polluted. How's that? that, that that's, a, that's a big word today. Pollution. Pollute. 
You know, don't throw your plastic bags in the ocean because animals are dying and the, the whales are eating it and and polluted the house of the Lord. You realize since Chronicles, what we've read that's been in that house of the Lord, there's been altars, there's been images, there's been tearing this apart, tearing this apart, locking this up, breaking that, breaking the all kinds of, of, of this false worship, false worship of the stars of the temple. And God said, you know what? You polluted it. Read Malachi. Right now, you should go read Malachi. We're not going to. How the priests profaned and polluted the, the, the offerings. And it wasn't done physically. It was their attitude. I got to do this again. I got to put this on the fire. Blah, 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 and offer the lamb again. And you know, got to break the bread. And keep dream the cow. There was no joy. There was no willingness. There was no giving to the Lord. Like, Amen. Glory to God. It got a burdensome. And then you bring in your Christmas tree. And you bring in your world. And you bring in the, 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 the flesh. Like we talked about today in, in the full study. Today's full study. You bring the flesh in. And that does not please God. You're not going to find the Holy Spirit doing a belly dance. And yet you will find it in churches today polluted the house that's there's pollution in the church today the christian body not the buildings the christian body has been polluted you got in amongst the assemblies of the christian body you're supposed to be saved you got unsaved worldly people and then you got christians who are saved who are worldly that's polluting the body you know how god's going to solve that he's going to have the rapture one day he's only going to call those that are saved clean and pure everybody else stays behind that's how he's going to do it. The house of the Lord, which he had hollowed, made holy in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers. Not only Jeremiah, but man, he's sending preachers, he's sending prophets, he's sending evangelists, he is sending people to get right, will you? Uh, I don't know what the number is, but you know how many street preachers are out there worldwide? Not just America, worldwide. I know one husband and wife, they go all over the world preaching the gospel. I know there's one in New York, in, in, uh, uh, in the Bronx. I know one is in the, the, the Green in New Haven. I, I don't know if they're still doing it. I know a guy who does it on the strip in Las Vegas. I know of men, they have to do it... Uh, they can't make it public street ministry in these nations where you can't have the Bible. I mean, you can't have a specific day. Messengers. You know, we have messengers today. It's all on computers, on Facebook. It, it's on YouHoo, uh, and it's on all these things. And it's anything but about God. You can talk to people, you know, on a computer. It ain't about God. Raising up be times. That means as often as they can. You know that word is also used when it comes to discipline with children. You ought to paddle them be times. Often. God sent his men often. I know for a fact in Daytona Beach, Florida, every week, Lord willing, there are preachers down here and teachers that are going out, preaching the word, getting gospel tracts, going door to door in the, uh, the city where we're going to church. There is every week people going out trying to witness. The, that's be times. You can't say God is cruel and mean. Judgment is coming. I don't know when. But God says, go out. Well, what does God say to the Christian? Go in all the world and preach the gospel, how they can be saved. You know what God's saying to Jeremiah and the men right now? Go and preach. I am mad at you, and you better repent. Matter of fact, you know what? You just go to Babylon. You obey that, that King Nebuchadnezzar. I am taking you out of the land. That's how mad I am at you. I'm going to have you spend 70 years in Babylon. Don't even think about staying. And then God like, okay, some can stay, but not all. At this point, Daniel's gone. Ezra and Nehemiah are gone. And what we're going to learn right now, Nehemiah is going to come back and write it, and he's just going to be in disbelief when he's writing his mute. He comes to this one point, him and his mute can't even get through the destruction that Babylon does. 
because he had compassion on his people. Now, what is that verse right there? He had compassion on his people that he sent preachers, evangelists, prophets, Jeremiah. What is that? I'll tell you exactly what that is you'll find in the, in, the, in the gospel. And you'll find today, for God so loved the world that he gave. Now, he didn't give Jesus Christ in Second Chronicles. He gave them prophets. He gave them missionaries. He gave them evangelists. I love you so much. I want you to get right. I don't want you to be damned. I don't want you to be in my anger. Jeremiah, tell them to repent. And they don't. When you hear a man come knocking on your door, you hear a man preaching in the street, you have somebody give you a gospel tract, you're sitting in the public party, and there's a piece of paper there about Jesus. Uh, however the gospel's getting out, you, you get mad at him. God says, I did that because I love you. I had that person do that because they love you. And then they come up to you, you don't have no love. You don't love us. You're mean. You're cruel. That's not what Jesus would do. You don't know what love is. Because I can do the ungodly, unloving thing. I can do exactly what your church do. does nothing at all. And just let you go to hell. That's not love. You know, go into all the world and preach the gospel. What is that? Gospel means good news, good tidings. Because he had compassion, love beyond degree on his people, the Jews, and on his dwelling place, Jerusalem. But they hearken, I mean, wait, they mock the messengers of God. You've been in a public ministry where they mock you? There it is in Second Chronicles too. Don't get upset people are going to mock you. It's there. Many men, Jeremiah ended up in the mire muck and he's sinking down. And it was so deportable and so danger to his life. One man says, hey, we got to get him out of there. And despise his words. Oh, I've seen that in the public ministry. I'm going to tell you right now, when we read 2 Chronicles 36, we are in the days of America today. You know how well they despise the word of God? They don't allow it in the courtroom. They don't allow it in the schools. I wonder how far they're going to go. You can't find, really, a King James Bible in a Christian bookstore. I've been in them where it's not there. And then you got to be so tricky. you got to hand the Bible to my wife when we're at a store. And there's, there's tons of Bibles. And you got a King James Bible. And say, honey, find that verse in Acts chapter 7. Because it may not be a King James Bible, decorated as a King James Bible. And it's like a skit from a church today. It's a King James Bible that is dressed up as a King James Bible, being a modern Bible. It's got a Halloween costume on. King James Bible is the absolute word of God. And misuses prophets. What do you do with that word? Misuse? How do you misuse a prophet? You know, I, I, I'll tell you one thing you can misuse. And you got the warning. You take your hair dryer, you're in the shower, and you're going to cut it with, with the scissors while the water's running. That's misusing a hair dryer. Okay? How do you, use, how do you misuse a prophet? Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Do you realize anybody in the public ministry, as we're going out there, as we're being mocked, as we're being misused, as they're despising the word of God, do you realize every time we go out, the more and more they do it, the more and more it gets worse, it's going to get to a point, God says, that's it, I'm done. And for the church age, he's not going to call Babylon it, but the church age is going to say, Gabriel, Michael, blow that trump. I've had it. My compassions and my long suffering is gone far enough. That's going to happen. Sure enough, as, as Judah went into captivity at Babylon, the church is going away. If the church, uh, if the world keeps on going as worse as it is and God never passes judgment, he's going to have to apologize to the people of Second Chronicles 36 and he's not going to. As sure as Judah went into captivity, this world is going to be judged by God. God's going to take us. He took Jeremiah out of it. 
Watch this. And rose against his people. There was no remedy. Nothing is going to help them now. Therefore he brought he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. The temple had no compassion upon the young men or maiden, men or women, old men or him that stooped for aid. There's a man, he's stupid, he's got a cane, he's walking. You've seen people like that, you feel sorry for him. And they abused that man and they killed that man, they tortured that man. By the way, this is the third and final time Babylon comes. Now the city will be destroyed. He gave them over into his hand. All the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. It's gone. This is the third time, final time. And this is what happened. They burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces. That's the first time that word shows up. There was fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. They are destroying, dismantling, just rubbling. If it could burn, it was made to be ash. The only thing left over is rocks and they have been displaced. And Lord willing, when we get to Nehemiah, we're going to see how bad that place is. And then they had escaped with the sword, carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons unto the reign of the king of Persia. That's the first time that word shows up, Persia. To fulfill the word of the Lord spoken, I'm, I mean, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah. Was Jeremiah a proper prophet? Yes, he was. Unto the land had enjoyed, that's the only time that word shows up, enjoyed. Verse 7. As long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to, to fulfill three score and ten years. Now the 70 years is that every seventh year the land was supposed to have a rest, and they didn't do it. And God counted that up on, on the abacus. God counted that up on the calculator. God tallied it up. He says, you owe me 70 years. And I'm going to give that land a rest. 70 years because you didn't do it. And while you're resting 70 years, your people are going to be in Babylon. And when Ezra comes back, the 70 years is gone. Now the first year of Cyrus, that's the first time that name shows up, Cyrus, king of Persia. The word of the Lord spanked by the mouth of Jeremiah, there he goes still. Might be accomplished, that's the first time that word spoken. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. I think Abraham Lincoln made some stupid proclamation. This one's for the Jewish people, God's people, and someone's going to hate me for that. I don't care. And put it also in writing. Oh, that's going to be interesting in Nehemiah. This writing's important because they're going to go back and try to find this the evidence, and they will find the evidence. Because they're going to challenge Nehemiah. So God said, write that down, will you? And put it somewhere where it's going to be safe. Thus said King, I'm excuse me, thus saith Cyrus the king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth has the Lord God of heaven given me. Look at giving God the credit. You know who put me on this throne? Everyone voted. No. God did and has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem. God told me I'm in charge. God told me to build that house back, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people, the Jews? Now, this is the last book in a Jewish Bible. The Jewish Bible is not laid out without, they don't have the New Testament, first of all. But the last book of the Jewish Bible, if you go get one, has 2 Chronicles. 
You turn to the last. You turn to the last page of our Bible. It says, "Even so, come, Lord Jesus." Right? The last phrase for the Jewish people in their Jewish Bible is, "The Lord, uh, who is there among His people? The Lord His God be with Him. Let Him go." That's interesting. We're told to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Let him go up. The last words in the Jewish man's Bible is you get back to that land. For the sake of building the temple. The temple's not there. It's not there today. And they're going to go back in that land. I don't know when that temple's going to be built during the church age, during the, the reign of the Antichrist, but they will go back and build that temple. Again. And there we go. We close another book, Second Chronicles. It only gets better.